The worried criticisms of the nation-state law have now again spread to the Jewish diaspora, with World Jewish Congress President Ron Lauder writing a second op-ed about how Israeli policies pose the greatest threat to the future of the Jewish people. In the op-ed, which was published Monday to the New York Times, the Jewish billionaire and advocate listed such examples as the failure to construct an egalitarian prayer space at the Western Wall, restrictions on conversion laws, the recently passed surrogacy bill, which excludes single men, the detaining of Orthodox Rabbi Dov Chayun last month, and of course, the new nation-state law. Well, here with more on these issues, the former head of the Office of the Chief Rabbi of Israel, Rabbi Dov Halbertal, and former Israeli ambassador to multiple countries, Yosef Livni. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having us. Um, Appreciate it. Uh, Now, so my first question is, can the divide between Jews of the diaspora and Jews of Israel be patched? Because right now it's, it seems to be growing. Uh, Rabbi, how about you? I, th- I think so. We love the, 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 the Jewish in the diaspora. We respect them. And we are thankful for everything they are doing for the state. And they, they are doing a lot. On the other hand, they have to respect us. Our sovereignty, our values... And they have to know one very crucial thing. If they want to influence, let them come here. They cannot sit there and uh, ask questions about the national law or the Western Wall, the Kotel, or something like this. We are a democratic place. They have to know that the citizens who are here in the state, they decide, and they sitting there in Miami Beach, in Washington, they cannot decide for us, and they have to support us without any condition. Well, but that's the well, but that's the thing. You know, if you're talking about people supporting us, which often you know boils down to financial support from the United not States. Not only, not only, but not only, but it yeah. often often boils down to to financial support. And if we're talking about lobbying, financial support, or any other type of material support for the country of Israel, wouldn't you expect them to be in support of the policies here? Why would they support policies that they disagree with? They don't, they don't have to support policies. They don't want to interfere in, the, in those questions. They have to support the state of Israel without any condition in every government. I personally, I don't like Netanyahu. I, lo- I don't, I'm against the national law very firmly. On the other, I wouldn't go mm-hmm. to the states and declare it. They're all right, you know, all kinds of uh, articles about it. Uh, they have to back us, to back us sure. without any condition. Then we will be united. Uh, I, have, I have a different perspective on the issue. Look, when I was Deputy Consul General in New York, I remember uh, one of my uh, contacts said, if you want us at the landing, we want to be with you when you take off. What do I mean by that? The American Jewish world, and I don't use the word community because when you have five million people, these are, this is not a community. This is a whole world. They are a strategic asset of the state of Israel. They go and they fight for us. They go and support us in those issues that are crucial to our livelihood, to our security, etc., What they're saying is we as a nation are moving towards one direction and we are creating a void between them and us. I think it's their right to express their views. I think that if we expect them to go and support us, Go, as they say in baseball, go to go mm-hmm. with a bat, right? Sure. For the state of Israel, I think they have every right to express their opinion. In many issues, I see eye to eye with them. Mm. I think that if we keep uh, opening this gap between sure. them and us, those who will pay for it will be us. All right, so uh, I'd like to actually kind of read uh, an excerpt from Ron Lauder's uh, uh, op-ed, which is very pertinent to what we're talking about. Tragically, the new policies will not strengthen Israel, but weaken it, and in the long run, they may endanger Israel's social cohesiveness, uh, economic success, and international standing. But the greatest threat to the future of the Jewish people for over 2,000 years, modern Judaism, has aligned itself with enlightenment. The Jews of the new era have fused our national pride with religious affiliation with the dedication to human progress, uh, and 
worldly cultural morality. Conservatives and liberals, we all believe in a just Zionism and a pluralistic Judaism that respects every human being. So when members of the Israel uh, government unintentionally undermine the covenant between Judaism and Enlightenment, they crush the core of contemporary Jewish existence. How would you respond to that? That's not fair. You know, it's not fair. You have to know they are three millions, maybe liberals and reformed there in the States. Well, but so that's actually another point, point that no, he brings up. If you talk about the whole of the Jewish world, including Israel and the diaspora, the vast majority are not ultra orthodox. No, no, no. But it's not true. You see here, you see here in the elections, you see in the coalition, they are the majority. If not, there, there weren't any problems with the Kotel, with the Western world, any problems with the, all the, the gays and all those things. If they want, they have to understand it very deeply. If they want to really influence, why aren't they coming? You know, three million reforms and liberals coming here, they change everything. They will have whatever they want. They cannot sit there and they impose on me, on us here, their values. Well, but the vice, but the I vice don't is, interfere in their things. But the thing is, I think this is where we uh, descend from each other. The point is, I am not an Orthodox Jew. I do not accept the rabbinical authority. I do not see them as representing me. I am a liberal Jew. Mm. In the United States, every stream or every current of Judaism is legitimate. Mm -hmm. I think it is within their rights to say, hey, wait a minute. Why is it that in Israel, a conservative rabbi is taken to police station at five o'clock in the morning mm. for what? For conducting marriage. I think that, at least in my view, I think Israel should expect, should accept the fact that there are people here who are just as Jewish as the people who are consider themselves Orthodox, but who express their Judaism in a different manner. Mm. So it's not a question of they are sitting there and they are telling us what to do. What they're saying is, give our brethren who live in Israel the same rights that others have, that the Orthodox have, or that Orthodox have in the United States where they're a minority. So I'd like no? to bring it back to you, because you, you mentioned earlier, you know, about the United States Jews and the Jews in diaspora who should respect the yeah. laws of Israel regardless. Yeah. But... Here in Israel, going off of uh, Ambassador Livni's point, if we have, even, even if the majority were ultra-Orthodox, which I don't believe that the numbers support that, but even if, even if that were true, if you had 30, 40 percent of the Jews who were secular, would, you know, wouldn't it be respectful? Wouldn't it, isn't it just to offer them you know, the equal benefits as a Jew? Of course, of course. We cannot, I don't think that uh, as an ultra-Orthodox I will impose on somebody, on, on the ambassador, my values. Not at all. Well, but isn't he that is doing privately doing whatever they, he wants. But privately. isn't that what a lot of these he laws that we listed I, but earlier, I, isn't that what The, the debate is not, is not this. The debate is on the publicity of the states, how it looks like the Jewish state. That is the debate. In this debate, we, the Orthodox, are the majority the state, Is the Jewish state the state of all the Jewish people or just the people living in Israel? The Jew, we respect and we love all the Jewish people. What I'm saying is like this. They can abroad criticize me. They can. They have the all right to do it. But they have to support me. They cannot threat in disconnecting the connections because it starts with the reforms, with the liberal and with the Western world. It will finish mm -hmm. with the agreement in Gaza. Tomorrow he will say, like, like the national law, he will, say, he will tell us, mm -hmm. if you don't come to agreement with the Palestinians and give them Yerushalayim, we will disconnect the connections. Is that, is that, is that a fair? It's, well, it's a fair thing. What do you well, think about it? They can, no, they can I, think say that. I think there's a different, a huge difference okay. between the political issue and something which is not political. Okay. It is something that has to do with deeply rooted values mm and something which is written in the Declaration of Independence, freedom of conscience, freedom of, of religion. The, what they're saying is, what do you mean? Uh, they in, in the say, state, uh, unfortunately, publicly, yeah. unfortunately. publicly, the public arena in Israel should be open uh, for all Jews, okay. whether be they are reform, 
Conservative. So let them come. Right, they are not coming. Unfortunately, not with coming. that, we have to we have to end it. Uh, uh, I apologize, but Ambassador Livni, Rabbi Halbertal, thank you both very much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you.